The Jerusalem Post said the a historical myth that Jesus was a Palestinian is often rooted in nationalist propaganda designed to erase the Jewish history and memory, a centuries-old system of anti-Jewish oppression. And this article was by Jordan Cope, December 24th, 2023. And I agree with that. I believe that this is propaganda, saying and, and, and proclaiming that Jesus was a Palestinian. And they will also say that he was a Muslim. They don't tell you that a lot of times, but that's in eschatology. What's eschatology? You might be saying that it's the study of end times, the theology of what the end times will look like. Well, Islam has their own eschatology, just like Christians do too. We believe that Jesus is coming back, and most of us believe that he's got a plan to save Israel again too, right? Because that's in the scriptures, especially when you study the Old Testament. Well, Islam also has their own eschatology, and they believe that they call him Isa. That's what they call Jesus, but they believe that he was just a prophet. He was not the Son of God, and that he did not die on the cross for our sins. There's a lot of holes in that because a lot of Christians will say like, hey, they believe in Jesus too. See? Be careful with that. You're going to learn what this is all about in this episode. So watch this. So that article in the Jerusalem Post was correct. That is propaganda. So here is... The Palestinian Authority head, Mahmoud Abbas, attending Christmas midnight mass at the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem last year. So Abbas in recent years has depicted Jesus as Palestinian, says the writer. And the credit to this photo is is Ahmad uh, Garbali, and it's from Rudders. But anyway, I saw this article and I was just like, Okay, I see what this guy's trying to do. He's trying to paint the picture of Jesus being a Muslim and a Palestinian, and this is not the truth. It's a lie. So the myth that Jesus was Palestinian, a ploy designed to invite Christians to support the Palestinian nationalism. That's what that's about. And I've seen a lot of this in recent years. Um I had a pastor who said he went on a trip to Israel with a bunch of Calvary Chapel people and Anyway, he said that this Palestinian Christian took him aside and said, why do you guys always support Israel? Well, how come you don't support us? I'm a Christian. Well, he didn't see through, he didn't have the discernment to see through that. That was an evil thing that he was doing because real Christians, in my opinion, real believers, will have a love in their heart for Israel when they're a believer. Because God loves Israel. Jesus loves Israel to this day. Yes, the nation of Israel, the people of Israel. Yes, he does. And you might be saying, well, he loves the whole world. Yeah, he does love the whole world. And that's why he allowed the Israelis, the, the people, Jewish people to reject him so he can go out and save as many Gentiles as he could. But guess what? Have you read Romans chapter 11? God has a plan for the Jewish people as well. It's written all over the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and that's what we're seeing here. So we got to be careful of this, this, uh, this deception that's going on right now. So let's go back into the presentation. So here's some of the propaganda that you'll see, like this image right here. It says, Made in Palestine, uh, Unpacking the Palestinian Jesus, this, this says, and it's from the Bridges for Peace. Sounds good, but no, it's evil. It's propaganda. What is propaganda? Propaganda are lies. And who is the... Who is the father of lies? Jesus himself the fa- said the father of lies is Satan. He said that. Jesus said the father of lies is Satan. He, he also said that he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Well, a lot of these radical, uh, like Hamas and ISIS and some of these Hezbollah guys, all that stuff, they're liars and they're murderers. And they're taking after their own father, who is Satan. They may call him Allah, but he's actually Satan. So you got to be careful with this stuff that you see today as a Christian. So here's some propaganda. Here's some more propaganda that you might see. Shows Mary as a Palestinian in this bombed out area and Joseph and they're they're poor. They're on the street and she's pregnant with baby Jesus. So they're trying to, to, to put this into your mind and your heart. Here's some more propaganda. So this priest put a Palestinian uh, head 
scarf around Jesus, the baby Jesus with bombed out like broken pieces of concrete here, and they're trying to paint that picture. It's really anti-Israeli and anti-Jewish is what it is. Here's more propaganda. Look at the Jesus with the Palestinian flag behind him. There's more. Here's another one showing uh, just the Dome of the Rock here and how Jesus is a Muslim. It's, it's okay, this is, this is garbage, you guys. Here's another one, a very Muslim-looking Jesus, right? This is their image of Jesus. And here's another one that says, it says here, it's kind of blurry here, but you can, I can read it for you. What a great picture of Jesus, this propaganda says. In a Palestinian flag, Christians seem to forget that Jesus was a Palestinian. Okay, that's a lie. First of all, there was no Palestine or Palestinian name back in Jesus' time. That word wasn't even used, probably. It was later in 135 AD that the evil emperor Hadrian of the Roman Empire renamed the area of Judea and Israel. He renamed it Palestina. That's when it happened, way after Jesus was around. This is 135, 135 BC, or excuse me, AD. That means Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. It's 135, 35 years after Jesus was born. And this guy wanted to wipe Israel off of the map. That's how evil he was. And this is what he was doing. So he renamed it Palestina, and he sold the Jewish people throughout the world as slaves and exiled them. So that's where that comes from, that word Palestina. So let's continue on here. Here's another picture, a propagandist picture of Jesus holding the AK-47. Here's a something they did as a symbol of, of what they be, they're trying to trick people and Christians into believing here. More propaganda. Here's another one with Jesus as a, a special operator, right? A warrior. And this, my friend, he's, and there's Mary in the background. This one is what they consider Jesus to be. Is he's going to come as a jihadist, their version of Jesus, the Esau, okay? The prophet Jesus, they call him. And, and they think he's coming back in the end of times to fight as a jihadist. Okay, this is what they believe. So who's the real Jesus? Is it the Islamic Jesus or is it the Jewish Jesus? Well, I'm here to tell you right now, it is the Jewish Jesus, and I'm going to prove that to you. So let's look at Islamic eschatology. I told you about that earlier. They have an end times belief, and this is what it is. They believe that this guy right here called the Mahdi or the 12th Imam is coming back to this world. He's coming to this world to to save. He's going to be the savior of the age, they believe. And he comes back, guess what, riding on a white horse. Where did they get that? They got that from Revelation chapter 6. Well, if you know your Bible well, <laughs> Revelation chapter 6, the rider on the white horse, the beginning of that whole thing is, is the Antichrist. Okay? That's what he is. He's the, the first rider on the white horse is the fake one. Okay? The one that's a liar. And, and this is whom the Islamic eschatology, this is what they believe is their Messiah. Isn't that crazy? Now watch, there's more. It gets there's a lot more to this. Here, here we go. Let's look at some more of it. So they say he rides in on a white horse. Here's a picture that they have drawn, that that Muslims have drawn, Islam's Islamic people have drawn, and, and they say he's the rider with who leads an army with black flags. What was the black flags? This is the ISIS flag, you guys. Isn't that that's crazy, right? So this Islamic Messiah, this Mahdi or this 12th Imam, he's the same writer that we see in the Revelation chapter 6. So they say that he signs a seven-year peace with the Jews and the West. Whoa, 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 whoa. Isn't that in Daniel? In the book of Daniel, we see that that, that vile person signs a seven-year agreement with the holy people, the Jewish people, for one week, which we know is that seven-year period which has not been fulfilled yet? Yes, that's what we see, my friend. This is crazy stuff, right? So let's go back into it. So they believe he signs a seven-year peace agreement. They believe that he teams up with the Islamic prophet Jesus. They call him a prophet. Remember that? So there's their your uh, Palestinian Jesus, right? So Revelation 13 says, Then I saw, okay, this is Revelation 13 talking about the beast and the beast is the Antichrist. He's the one that comes in on the first one that comes in on the white horse in Revelation chapter 6. 
coming up. Then I saw the beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. So this is, I'm sorry, another beast. The first beast was the Antichrist, right? The one that rides on the white horse at the beginning of that tribulation period, which is chapter six. This one's another beast. So he's like the first one coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but and he spoke as a dragon, but he spoke as a dragon. Who's the dragon in, Re- in the book of Revelation? Satan. Revelation tells you the dragon is Satan. Who's the lamb in Revelation? Jesus. So he looks like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. So the image of Jesus, yet he speaks like Satan. He's satanic. And he's called a prophet in the book of Revelation as well. He's called the false prophet. Well, Islam believes that this jihadist Jesus, they say he was on the cross, but he didn't die. He was whisked away into heaven, and he was there with Muhammad, and that he comes back to be serve with the Mahdi to set the world straight, right? This is what they believe, and they believe he was nothing more than a man. He's not the son of God, and this is what they believe. So don't be deceived, my friend. Don't be deceived. Really, you're going to believe this propaganda? Don't do it if you're a Christian. It's wrong. So inside of the Dome of the Rock, these are the words on the the north, uh, it would be like the northeast corner of the inside of the Dome of the Rock. It says this, inside of that, it says, there are quotes from the Quran that manifest the Muslim view on Jesus, and it's pointing towards that east gate or that golden gate. Isn't that interesting? And it says, a prophet, but not a Messiah, the son of Mary, but not the son of God. And that's in their scriptures from the Quran, the Surah 19, verses 33 through 35, in their book. And it's written right here on the northeast corner of the Dome of the Rock, which points to what? The East Gate. And you're going to see that. Watch this. Here's that East Gate. Well, this is the Golden Gate. They call it today. This was built by the Ottoman Turks in 1517 AD, the Muslim Ottoman Turks. And when uh, Solomon the Magnificent, who was in charge of building these walls in Jerusalem, heard that the Messiah was going to enter by this East Gate someday, the Jewish Messiah, he had it sealed shut in fulfillment of Ezekiel's prophecy, which says the Lord made it sealed shut because the Messiah had entered by it. Isn't that amazing? So God sealed it, had it sealed shut to fulfill the scripture in Ezekiel because Jesus came down this Mount of Olives on the donkey and he came through this gate, which was actually under here because it was a long time ago, and then into Jerusalem where Herod's temple was, which is right here where the Dome of the Rock was, and he came in. And uh, that was his first coming. His second coming is going to be a little bit different, but that's what we see there. Now, look at this. I'm going to give you the full view of this right here. But this is an overview of the Temple Mount right here. And this is where the dome, this is the Dome of the Rock, how you would see it today, the Dome of the Rock being right here. Well, to the north of that is this area right here called the Dome of the Spirits or the Dome of the Tablets. And many say that this is where Solomon's temple was up here. And this is where Solomon's porch was. And it, it's it's amazing because it lines right up with that Golden Gate or that East Gate, which is actually north east of the Dome of the Rock. And in, if you lined up the Mount of Olives, this original East Gate, it would take you to Solomon's temple and that that place where the ark stood, and it would take you straight to what? Golgotha, right? Where Jesus was crucified. Well, down here was, I believe this is where Herod's temple was, and this is where the Dome of the Rock is today. Well, what did we just talk about? Inside of here, right there on that northeast corner of the Dome of the Rock, those words that Jesus was not the Messiah, he was not the Son of God, and it points right over here to this gate. That is evil, <laughs> and and this is what they are claiming right there. So why would you, as a Christian, believe that Jesus was a Palestinian? This is it's a lie from Satan, my friend. Don't believe that. All right, let's continue on in this presentation. So 
Here's a drawing that I made actually of the Mount of Olives. If you did that straight line, this is what it would look like during Jesus's time. This is where Solomon's porch was, where that east or golden gate is, the golden gate today, but the east gate back then. And then Herod's temple down here, down this lower part. And there would be a straight line going right through here all the way to Golgotha where Jesus was crucified. Isn't that amazing? It's all in the Bible. Check out Ezekiel sometime. That's where you see the details. So Revelation tells you what will happen to this fake Messiah, the beast, right? The the Antichrist and the false prophet, Jesus, whom they call Jesus. He's really not Jesus or Esau is what they call him. This is what his fate is. So Revelation 19 speaks of the return of the true Jesus Christ and what will happen to the beast and his false prophet. Here it says, and the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. So they were seized, and these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone. For how long? Forever. (laughs) Forever. So who's the real Jesus? The real Jesus returns, like I said, in Revelation chapter 19. He's the true rider on the white horse, you guys. And this is his name in Hebrew, Yeshua. Joshua, right? Which means, like, the Lord is our salvation. Yahweh is our salvation. Yeshua. This is the Jewish Jesus, the true Jesus, you guys. So not just a prophet, okay? (laughs) He's not just a prophet. He is the son of God, and he's very Jewish. This is probably what he would have looked like, and he would have been in the synagogues, just like this teaching from the Torah and from the prophets and from the writings, right? The Tanakh is called. And this would have been what his mother would have looked like. And his stepfather, not his real father, his stepfather Joseph, they would have looked like that in the Jewish temple, doing all of the Jewish customs. This would be the true, what the true Jesus was like. Now, I want to go through this a little bit. Today, there are many Jewish people in Israel. This is Elisha, and this is Jeff from the Jews for Jesus. And they're believing more and more in Yeshua, their true Messiah. It's a growing thing right now, which is a beautiful thing. Here's a a great ministry right here. It's called I Am One for Israel or One for Israel. But they have this logo that says I Am One for Israel.org. It's a great one. Check them out. And this would be a little picture I threw in there, what the true Jesus would be looking like. And here's a Jewish man who gives his testimony. He used to uh, be a a very uh, religious Jewish man who discovered the tr- his true Messiah. It's a great testimony. And here's another picture of him. The most Jewish thing I could do was believe in Yeshua, Jesus. It's a great testimony. Check it out if you get a chance. Check out One for Israel. Great ministry. Lots of good stuff there. They have lots of resources and great teaching. So again, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, baby Yeshua, during that first Passover where they couldn't afford the lamb, but they were holding the lamb of God in their hands because all they could afford were these two turtle doves. But who were they having holding in their, their arms? The true lamb of God. Who was in their hearts? The true lamb of God. Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, the Messiah. So good. Hey, my friend, if you have not subscribed yet, you might want to hit that subscribe button down there. Right now, I'm doing a series. I think you're going to love it, but it's How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. Click on that playlist right there, my friend, and you will be blessed. I promise you that. You will be blessed because this playlist is all about how we could find Jesus in the Old Testament. We just finished up Joseph. Now we're in Moses and how he is a lot like Jesus. You're going to be blessed by it. So click on that playlist.